Welcome to Phoenix Rising with Dr. Z. This podcast is all about conversations about healing and rising from the ashes of your grief and trauma. In this podcast, we will be deconstructing and highlighting the different aspects of grief and loss. I'm your host, Dr. Christina Zampatella. Hi, welcome to Phoenix Rising with Dr. Z. I'm Dr. Zampatella, your host. Um, I am here with John, who's going to be talking about the use of yoga in um, working with people who have grief and trauma. Um, we are we have another episode we're going to be recording at the same time, like right after this one, on the use of sound therapy. So if this gets you all ignited up and you're interested in this, stick around because the one for uh, sound therapy is just going to be just as uh, cool just from a different perspective. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet John, and then we're going to talk a lot more about uh, about yoga. He is actually one of um, the, actually, yoga and uh, sound therapy instructors here at the Center for Grief and Trauma Therapy. So it's a very unique um, uh, approach to healing that not a lot of uh, organizations are, are offering um, alongside of traditional psychotherapy and group therapy. So um, let's get started, shall we? Hi. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for coming. Can you uh, in introduce yourself? Well, my name is John McElderry. Uh, you know, I've been in physical movement since I was a kid, just like most people. But you know, as as you get older, you you find things that you really enjoy, and yoga is one of those things that I really found about 22 years ago. And I basically kind of started my practice with with the Ashtanga yoga practice, which is somewhat of, of a discipline. You know, you're supposed to practice it six days a week, and you have a guru and um, is Ashtanga like more uh, like rigorous than other types of yoga? Everyone, it's accessible to anyone. It's okay. just it, it, it was just kind of what was there. You know, okay. what I mean, it's like anything when when you when you come, you know, did yoga invite me in or did I invite yoga in? So oh, okay. I can kind of just remember walking into my first yoga studio and going to the class and saying, "Well, I'm going to sign up for another one." You know, this mm -hmm. is this was great. I felt so good, and and it, it took me back to a place where. Um, you know, the body was just feeling better, and it was also, I had a purpose, you know what I mean? Um, I was, found yoga through the voice, so, like, what I was, does that mean? well, I was studying voice up in Boston, and I was, voice as in singing, singing, yes. oh, okay, okay, yeah, so, um, I wasn't sure if you meant, like, the voice, yeah, no, no, well, the I guess voice, in a way, the voice, <laughs> the calling, <laughs> the calling, there you go, okay, no, but it's, it's, a. Uh, that was, some t my why of getting behind the yoga was because it, it really helps the support system of your voice. Mm -hmm. And then you realize it helps the support system of your life or anything else that's, that you're working on in like a healing or whatever your goal is or where, where you're going to, you don't even know what it is. It's mm -hmm. like anything. When you start something, you don't realize you're going into this deeply inner experience that's going to, essentially change your life in, in so many different ways and just make things better and and that's one of the reasons I'm so adamant about it yeah you know, like you know bringing the message and it's it's one of those things when you are you know when things come up if you have this in your background it's just a good card to pull you know and if like you for don't coping skill coping skills Healing. or just if you injuries uh you know emotional well-being mental balance all that stuff it really um you know, if you can put it in place before you need it, and then it's really there. But, you know, and, and then the other call to action is don't be afraid to ever start, you know. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm too old, or I'm too, I have a different body type, or this, that, and the other thing, and I can't do this. Or, you know, there's just a lot of a long laundry list of why not, why I can't do it, mm -hmm. but it's accessible to anyone. And, you know, as a yoga instructor, it's always your job to say, okay, what do we have here? What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to make this work for you? You know, whether it's a person in a chair, or a person with a handicap, or a world-class athlete, just mm -hmm. trying to you know work on more, um, you know, s more spiritual inner journey. You know, stuff like that, like finding a different place. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I because you, you just brought up something very interesting. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed when I started yoga. Um, I started practicing yoga when I was out in California, when mm -hmm. I lived out there. And you could find different kinds of yoga studios. One yoga studio would be like, this is exercise. 
Like yeah. you are coming in here. It, I, I think of Bikram's yoga, right? I, that didn't feel very spiritual to me. That felt like somebody was trying to kill me. Like mm -hmm. it just was a lot. It, it just wasn't for me, right? So you'd go somewhere and it was very just, there just didn't seem to be anybody talking about the spiritual component of what yoga is because yoga, am I right in thinking that yoga did not come out of this is going to be exercise practice. This was meant to be more of a meditative, moving mindfulness kind of act, uh, thing that somebody engages in. And then when it, it kind of seems to have morphed over the years, in some ways, in some places, as being more exercise than being spiritually based. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's the tragedy of it a little bit, you know okay. what I mean, as far as like, you know, the desire to put a trademark on something, you know, yeah. like it's mine. This is my method. This is right. my, this is John's grief yoga. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really we can think about you know that I mean? though. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying. No, I'm teasing you, but I hear what you're saying. That's, yeah. that's a lane that is easily occupied by a certain you know, some of these goal or drive and, but you know, when it comes down to it, we just, if we even go back to like the, like Patanjali, like he, he wrote 2000 years ago, the Yoga Sutras and they're just really good life lessons. There's about- Let's say Sutra, sutra. Yoga Sutra. Yoga Sutras. So like, what, what does that mean to our viewers or listeners? Um, the Yoga Sutras are basically like a text that's written. Okay. It's almost, it's somewhere between like self-help and just good advice oh, it's like okay. having like counsel and you know like lesson one of patanjali's yoga sutras is, is like uh you know now let's talk about now like now begins the practice of yoga and now is we're now. here and we can't do yoga unless we're here now and we can't do it without anything more than just our open heart an open mind and a yoga mat and that's about all you really need. Mm -hmm. But that's like, that's a real abridged version of say lesson one. And then okay. lesson two might be like, uh, what's lesson two? It's something about like uh, our discipline, you know, our effort. We can, we can install our effort, but can, how do we install that blind faith of, you know, I'm going to do this yoga practice for 10 years. I'm going to do it for 10 days. I'm going to do it for you know, for however long, where, where is it going to take me? You know, right. having that faith that like, okay, you know, in my situation, um, I was hoping to build this big rock star voice, you know what I mean? So one of those blind elements was like me going into the mat every day and having a teacher and, and doing the poses, it, you know, the poses are easily, you know, you could start collecting poses if they were trophies or something like, oh, I mm -hmm. got this one, I got that one. But really when it comes down to it, it's that part of like, you know, you're just surrendering to something that's, that's bigger than you. And then you're also, you know, you get that wave of improvement. So it's just like any kind of muscle memory, it doesn't come right away. It comes in a wave of like, oh, and now after three years, I finally get it. Oh, okay. It, that reminds me like the waves know. of grief even, you know, cause grief isn't linear. Right. So in that, it's almost like. That's where I think it's effective. Say more about what you mean by that. Um, well, I think one, the waves of grief would be a great chapter in a book or something, you know, in relation to the, yeah. you know, the waves of the waves of everything, you know, like everything's a wave. So um, I would just think the the grief is, is a, as a process that's so unique to every each, each an individual and just like your own fingerprint or your own sound of your voice or your own yoga practice, you know, and then also just having that ability to um, let the yoga be the connection to peace, you know what I mean? So if you're, you've got, if your peace is loss, then the yoga is taking you through that process so that you, there's a pathway that's connected to basically peace at the end of that, you know, and it's not a, it doesn't mean it's a weekend project, but it does mean that there's a path. Like there is, every time you roll that mat up, you kind of like, you're, you're taking like a piece of yourself with you back home and like you're putting it either in your car or you're putting it in a sacred place or you're opening up to the stars at night to let it like be blessed. But you're just doing something, you know, you're spending a lot of time on that mat for a purpose, you know, and that wave of, uh, that wave of improvement is, 
you know, in, in my, when I work with people with grief, that's kind of what I'm going after. I'm, I'm hoping that yoga does the work. You know, I don't really want to know, you know, I'm willing to listen to anything that they have to tell me, but I really just want the yoga to kind of be like the activation, the activator, the, you know, the, what, what takes the person from, you know, beginner to intermediate to advanced, not in their practice, but just in their healing. In their you healing. know what I mean? So I think of like, when we talk about therapy, for example, we mm -hmm. talk about top-down therapy and bottom-up therapy. So top-down therapy being like a lot of talk therapy, mm -hmm. group therapy, interpersonal therapy, that kind of thing. And bottom-up being more the somatic kind of approaches to healing. Mm -hmm. So yoga and Reiki and sound therapy mm -hmm. and EMDR and yeah. other types of you know um, massage and even mindfulness and meditation. These are all more somatic approaches because I, I think we don't always consider that how much our body actually speaks our mind, you know, and how much healing can happen on a cellular level yeah. on a, you know, if you talk about your vagus nerve and you can talk about where you're holding your tension and you can talk about, because if you, if you don't have the emotional vocabulary or you don't have the, like speaking just doesn't seem to be enough, mm -hmm. you know, like, do I play music? Because that's the language of the soul. That, like, where mm -hmm. do I go with my my feelings in a different way that doesn't necessarily mean I have to flip and talk about it or I'm going to read a book about it. Let me see if there's other ways of healing that can happen that I don't necessarily have to think about. Mm -hmm. That I might set an intention, an intention, which I know sometimes you can set an intention, mm -hmm. or your intention might be, I just want to be here now. Right. Because I'm all over the place right now with my grief. I am, I'm in the past, I'm in the future, I'm everywhere, but I'm not here. Mm -hmm. So if yoga, if yoga can be part of the process of like connecting mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. it provides that space of healing that might be unique compared to like even coming into like my therapy room. It, would you, is that accurate? Oh, yeah, the couple of things I really was just tracking what you're saying is it's very accurate. And it also just triggers like there is there's no logic to it. So that's what's beautiful about it. There's right. the logic part of it. It's not something we can puzzle together. You know what I mean? It's 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 finally letting ourselves listen to our bodies to kind of figure ourselves out whether, you know, it doesn't matter if you're just if you're someone that's struggling with uh, confidence or if you're someone struggling with loss or someone struggling with like not so nice things that have happened to them in their life. Um, but it's that it's the fact that the logic part is is erased you know what i mean there's it's not really part of the equation with the yoga and i think that's helpful and then the second part of that that i was like thinking about like the two l words i was it was listening you know what happens when you actually listen you know to I mean? to yourself uh, you like know? to your body yeah to your like not just listening to your thoughts yeah it's more like My you're thoughts. you're well, what happens with yoga is your thoughts are, you know, we could, you know, I could paint a picture of what I think happens, okay, mm -hmm. which is fine. I think this is what happens, all right? So most people are kind of, and I witnessed this, I teach hundreds of people a week yoga, and you just, you start to just say, okay, you know, you see it, you yeah. know? So they come in and everything's in their head, you know, and then you, they start moving, and it's a bit of like that bottom-up approach, or just moving throughout the body. Then you see, okay, well, this person... We've just done a bunch of standing poses. At least this person now has taken that mind and all that chaos that's kind of trapped up here mm -hmm. and put it into their legs, okay? So now it's moving through the body, okay? Now they're, they're feeling a sensation and it's gonna take them a while to really just put a finger on like why they feel good. They walk out of there like, thanks John, da, da, da. <laughs> you know, like everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really think why they're happy. They're just like, I'm feeling good, thank you. You know, right. like it's, it's so, natural to kind of move from one to the other but um you know that's that's the listening but also like the moving the power of the mind so as like a musician and someone that's like pretty heavily trained in voice and studied with like a lot of interesting vocal teachers you know and and you know, experts or whatever non-experts just a lot of different modalities mixing in together you learn that the mind is movable. You know, it's not this thing that's trapped between our ears. It's kind of like a muscle. So you mm -hmm. can start sending it through your body. And you can, you know, as long as you're staying positive, not to sound cliche, but if you think you can do something, you can do it. Like, if, if you need to heal from an injury, 
you can do it. You know, if you need to heal from a loss or, you know, what I see is compounding losses, you know what I mean, with people. Like, there's just so much. That it's like a backup of losses or of backup of traumas or a backup of... Like a bereavement overload yeah, or trauma overload. Kind of, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like anything. It's, it's like some people just attract certain things, you know. I feel like... I mean, I'm sure you see this with your clients. Like, some people that have a lot of trauma just seem to. There's like one trauma after another, mm -hmm. and it's almost like, wow, this is this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of get things moving and like just get rid of clearing some mm. space to you know oh, okay. instead of uh, instead of continuing to have like that clogged. pushing back, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, when you're it's saying like that in my head, yeah, I'm, I'm in know. my head when you're saying that, I'm thinking like a person that gets clogged up with everything and, and yoga gives you a soft way of being able to move it gently through your body mm -hmm. without feeling like you're forcing it out of your body yeah. so that it can clear your mind a little bit in order to do the other kinds of things that might be needed in order to move through your, your healing journey. Yeah, very natural process mm -hmm. and just beneficial, you know, and it's an inner... It's an inner experience, okay? So that's when you, you're you kind of talking about like the 360 degrees of yoga. Like, you know, you've got the power yoga, you've got the core yoga. Those, these got are different the, kinds of yoga? No, just like every every kind of yoga in the book, you know? I mean, I mean, but are there multiple kinds of yoga? Yeah, there's, you know, there's like the foundational. Which ones? You know, I would say like, you know, the things that are good for grief, just why we're talking about it, is sure. like the hatha. You know what I mean? I mean like, what's hatha yoga? Hatha yoga is, you know, it's it's based on movement and breath, just like all of them. But it's a little right. bit more gentle. Okay. okay. It's like gentler to the person. Okay. Um, and then you take something like uh, the ashtanga yoga, which is, it's like a moving meditation that holds the poses for a while. You get some time to think and you get some time to move. Okay. And it's challenging. Okay. okay? Um, then you have like vinyasa, like like that LA style, like prana yoga, you know, where exactly. everything's like moving like a wave and it's like Snowy dance and, and everything's dancing. like, okay. you know, so everyone's going to find something that they like. It's just like anything. It's like a sandwich. Like we can line everyone up and say, do you like what, who doesn't like a sandwich? You I like I mean? yin yoga where I can just lay there for five minutes in each yin pose yoga is really and I can do too. like five different poses and I'm like, who did my yoga today? Well, but it, I mean, it, it, it still it, gets you there. Of and that's, course that's, it does. The, that's, of course. The, that's the cool part. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a nice one too. But I'm not, a, you know, I, I, I personally have gone in all the different directions, you know, like in LA or in Boston or just locally here in Delaware, you know, there's, there's lots of different offerings. And as a student of just being in love with it, you know, there's you can get trapped on the mechanical side of it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I find like what, what you're describing. Like there's yeah. so many different like, OK, well, somebody's going to be a lot more concerned about like the muscle. Right. And, and, and the bone and how many bones are in the feet and how many nerve receptors are in the bottom of the feet and right. how many bones we have in our hand and the connecting, you know, what what's connecting your shoulder to your you know, to your head and everything else. But that's really, that's just kind of like a very Western way of looking at things. Right. You know what I mean? Versus saying, okay, this is a spiritual practice. You know, we're here to, to go on, it's not a religion. It's just, it's like the spiritual practice of you. You've got the opportunity to turn your light on. You know what I mean? Oh, I like the way you say that. You know. And you it's... got the opportunity to turn your light on. Because I think so many people who are traumatized or are grieving feel like their light has been, it, is gone yeah and this might be a way to gently go there's the glimmer of it there it mm -hmm. is again it doesn't necessarily fix everything but it opens it up for further mm -hmm. opportunity you know further ways of of healing and can anybody do yoga uh, no i mean that's kind of like what i like to open up and say hey you know this is accessible to anybody you know and and for and why not there's no trophies there's no blue ribbons. There's no black belt in yoga. You know, you still we got back to the same things. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have an open heart and an open mind, you can go out and buy a yoga mat and start working on those two things. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, but you need a teacher. It's not one of those things that is like, uh, you can just watch a couple videos and really get it. You know what I mean? And the communities are very important. You know, just like anything, like mm. even. Even like a small yoga class or a big yoga class, there's a spirit there of community mm -hmm. that, I mean, you're, 
you know the power of just others. Mm -hmm. You know, the power of the group is always going to lift up the individual. And so that's like something that's available too in the process that, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to a yoga class, but, and you think, oh, all these people are here for these amazing, they would just want a great body and they mm -hmm. want this. Well, no, it's not. It's a, it's a disaster in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're, you're just like turning yourself in. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, that's it. You know, I'm turning it's myself in. It's a disaster in, in there. Well, it's... it's it, <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean. I've been you know, to so many yoga classes and you're just like... You think everyone's like there to uh, be like a supermodel or something. But there is this one you know, place that like, actually you teach there. I, I won't name the name because like I'm okay. trying not to be a that's jerk. Fine. But um, there is this one couple that every time I went to the class, it used oh, to gosh. drive me nuts. That it was like at the beginning of the class while everybody was waiting. And you know, I might be there in, in Shavasana where I'm just like laying there going, all right, when are we starting? And just trying to center myself. These two are doing like all these fancy like headstands and all these other things up against the wall and the thing. And like to me, I don't, I was like trying to check myself. Like, am I jealous? I don't think I'm jealous. I'm. Why am I annoyed at this? And I was like, wow, that's an interesting, you know, I'm trying to be mindful, mm -hmm. like what an interesting emotion. And I'm like, are they showing off? Like what's going on right now? So yeah. to me, it was like, there was this really weird feeling of like, you know, and then I'm seeing, you know, this person over here, like me, who's like, you know, sitting in easy style, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, and I, you know, we're going, oh my God, my back. <laughs> <laughs> and you know and I'm ready to get this started because I want to mm -hmm. limber up and I want to be present and mindful and connect my all of my things together um, but I was just thinking to myself like that felt like what I was watching felt very mechanical in nature versus other classes I've gone to which have been like yeah hey I want you to be safe in the way mm -hmm. that your body mechanics are like move your knee out here a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't want your knee to get hurt you know, but the focus was more on the inward journey that yeah. was occurring at the same time that there was this outward expression at mm -hmm. the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that, that makes total sense. And everyone's at a different place in their practice. So it's like, you know, what you could watch someone, they almost look like they're trying to hurt themselves in one department. Yeah. And, yeah. But really, that means something to them. Like, right. that ex form of expression is so important. And they, they, that person may be stuck on the fact that they're trying to get it. You know what I mean? So they're like just kind of And going, so that like, energy, I can, do it, I can do it, right? That energy is like, yeah. you know, that can frustrate people. Yeah. It can even frustrate people around them. Like that energy of like, um, we're all here to kind of chill. But, you know, that's one of the like yoga mm. sutra type things. Is Maybe like, that's what I was picking up on. I mean, you can kind of pick up on that. Yeah. You know, it's not about the pose. It's really about not getting the pose but the chaos that you create yeah. in the process even with your own self like oh john I'm, I'm i'm still mad at myself i can't like i'm teaching the class and i still can't do something that i really want to be able to do mm -hmm. whether my shoulder is a little beat up or, or i haven't just put my mind to it enough or I, maybe i just need to just get through it right. you know what i mean i haven't quite gotten through it so i'm gonna be like repeating it to myself i'm gonna be like and then I'm. Then people are going to be like, "Oh, it's okay," and I'm going to be like, "No, it's not okay." And then there's going to be conflict there. Oh my God! There. All da, 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 da. of the things. You know, just this is about yoga. You know what I mean? So it's. Is there it's a definition of yoga? Yoga is like kind of a mystery. You know, that's like yeah. the beautiful part. Like yoga is. Um, it comes from the word yoke, okay, and I have to think exactly what it. It's. Doesn't it mean breath? It really means, in a way. It really means unity, okay, mm. which is kind of beautiful. It is beautiful. You know? Now, but to throw out a meaning for me, as you know, John McElderry, to throw out a meaning for yoga, I think is a mistake. You know, that's just the most basic. It comes from the root word yoke in Sanskrit, and that word means unity. But let's just keep yoga a mystery. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, why not? You know, and we and then we can talk about some of the other things like the practice, right? Um, the word practice, it's a you know when you say it, is it available to everyone? Sure, but it's also called a practice. So you know, practice implies that this is going to be a little bit challenging. You know what I mean? And if it's if you like a challenge, it's for you. You know, it's if you want to do this, if you want to put the time in, it's for you. But it's it's not going to do itself, right. I guess. Is is but there is you know there's there's certain things that are implied when you hear the word practice. And that means like, oh, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, you know? What's the difference 
what what makes yoga for grief and yoga for trauma different than just like say I'm going to a yoga class? Um, I just think the overall um, sensitivity, okay, like that compassionate part of okay. the yoga, I think is really a beautiful part. Like you're never gonna walk out of a yoga class like a worse person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like that. It, it builds compassion and for yourself. It builds compassion for yourself, but that is also as like people that that facilitate and teach have a level of compassion, mm -hmm. all right? And that would be a good teacher, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of, it's like anything, you don't really know what what level of grief, what level of person is gonna come in. You kind of have to improvise and listen. And like, you, even if you're just listening to how somebody listens, or, you know, you're also in like this soup of everybody's nervous system, or even if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you, you're, you're experiencing that person's nervous system as a yoga teacher because you're going through, you're synchronizing, you're putting moves together. And that's just like how we operate. We don't think about it that often, but when you and I do the same exact thing, like, okay, mm -hmm. whether we're on a dance team or if we're on a um, football team or whatever, something that we have to synchronize our motion, we're going to kind of come together a lot quicker than if we're just doing our own thing. Mm. You know, it's kind of like with some teachers like, you must listen to me. And I'm like, well, now that teacher's distracted because they're not listening to them. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yep. But there's also a higher point of that too. It's not about listening to the teacher. It's about synchronizing with the group and creating that energy. Thank you for listening to Phoenix Rising with Dr. Z. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it, subscribe, and leave a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. We want to be a resource for anyone who is experiencing loss, and this is a simple way you can help us spread the word. Check out our show description. There you'll find a link to connect with me on social media, as well as helpful articles and resources. 